In order to mimic a web browser back button, we're going to need to store the layout we are on just before we leave it. In other words, we want to store the form view for customers when we click on the list view. And if I decide to come over to our invoices, then we store the customers list and so on. We're going to store that in a return separated list so that it's easy to parse. Remember, there's a lot of things that are return separated in FileMaker and because of that it's very easy to parse them so that's the way we're going to store them. We're going to go with the flow here. So what we need to do here is decide whether we want to store the layout name or the number. We can restore a layout name or a layout by number. It doesn't really matter but I'm going to go with a layout number because it's a much smaller piece of information. Be easier to look at and work with. So let's work on our script. We'll go into the script workspace. Click New. We'll call this Back. Now we don't really need our Allow User Board and our Set Error Capture. That's, this is going to happen so quickly. In fact, for right now, there's only one script step. It's going to be Set Variable. And what we're going to do is set dollar sign, dollar sign Back. And we need it to be a global variable because it needs to persist beyond the script. So we're going to be running it over and over and over again each time we navigate to a layout we're going to run it and so this needs to stay beyond this script. Now the formula is pretty simple too. We want the get layout number and what we're going to do is concatenate that with a return. So the pill crow character and then whatever's in dollar sign dollar sign back. That works great. It'll keep building this return separate list, but when dollar sign dollar sign back is empty, in other words, you haven't run this yet, it's going to put an extra return at the end, and we don't want that to happen. So we'll put a case statement around this. Is empty. Dollar sign dollar sign back. If it's empty, if that's the case, or actually we should do not as empty, it'll make it easier to write it. So if there is something in dollar sign dollar sign back, then we can go ahead and use the pill crow. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. So that will prevent that extra return at the very end. So a pretty simple formula, just one little thing to make sure we don't get that extra pill crow. And we're done. This is it, or at least it's it for now. So we'll save this. Now the question is, how do we actually run this? When do we run it? So we could attach it to any script, you know, at the end or the beginning, depending on what you want to do, that navigates to each layout. So we might have a, a script that navigates the customer's form and a script that navigates the customer's list, and maybe there's one that does this, and there, there's all kinds of things that might get to where we're going, and that's going to make a lot of pieces of code that we have to attach there. Sure, we're going to modularize it and do perform script, but it's going to be a hassle, and we'll probably forget and things like that. Better to centralize the code by using a script trigger here. This is an ideal situation where a script trigger, its benefits outweighs its disadvantages. So what we're going to do is go into the Layouts menu, Layout Setup, go to the Script Trigger section, and say On Layout Exit. Now this runs the script before it leaves. Remember it's a pre-script trigger, so it runs the script and then exits the layout. It doesn't exit the layout and then run the script, otherwise we'd remember the layout that we're going to. It, it remembers the layout we're on, and that's perfect for what we want. So now we need to do this on each of the layouts, so we'll go here to Layout Setup, Script Trigger, Oop, went a little bit too far there, On Layout Exit, Back, click OK, and do the same thing here with there, a little too far again, On Layout Exit, always wish they'd make that dialog a little bit bigger and we'll keep going through this. There's really only several layouts we need to worry about so it won't take that long. There we go. And we got two more to go. And the last one. And there it is. So now we've got that script trigger attached. You can see the little icon in the lower right hand corner here. 
and I'll go back to customers here go to browse mode pull up our data viewer go to the current section you notice that there's nothing in there but as soon as we navigate somewhere it should run that script and put a value in there and you can see there's a one in there now now if I go over there it doesn't matter how we get there but if I go over to any other layout back to form puts the two in there so now you can see it's storing these values in here no matter where I'm at and it'll keep pulling putting them together and we're putting them on top uh, you, you could have put them on bottom you know in you know have the most recent one at the top or the most recent one at the bottom it doesn't really matter it all depends on how you like to uh, parse your data you can do it either way it's easy I just happen to think that the one at the top should be that way but you can see how it's in a return separated list here very nicely no extra returns perfect for what we want now we can go ahead and work on making it so we can create a forward button or actually back through the uh, stuff the forward button would be different we need to back through these things that we just navigated through